Okay, today we'll look at Kicker Maintenance 101. Just a few basics we can do on the kicker itself to give it a longer life and make sure it's ticking along nice and smooth. Okay, you've got, so here is my kicker, one of the original kickers. A tip I do is to put the ant ID on the side, so if you're searching in a room of kickers or uh, you're not quite sure which one's which, put the ant ID on the side. So mine's 66, which is quite low. One of the original kickers from probably three, three and a half years ago. And here's Veronica's kicker, which I picked up uh, about two years ago. That's the 11 speed one, and again, her ant ID on the side there as well. So we know which one's which when we try and pair them. So a kicker itself, just a quick overview. Belt driven, standard uh, cassette and free hub on here. So the maintenance for the cassette and free hub is pretty much the same as a standard bike. The power meter itself on a kicker, if you don't know where this is, it's the little disc just here. That's where the strain gauges are. So that's quite delicate and why you need to do a spin down when you move the thing. And you've got the belt itself. Now these things, they're a standard belt, but they're quite hard to find. Wahoo will actually supply you one if you end up breaking one. I've broken this one after about 10,000 Ks. Veronica's is still going fine. I'll have a look at it. I'll show you a few things on here you can look at to know if your belt is becoming near end of life. And the last component we'll look at is the optical sensor in here. If your environment is quite dusty and dirty, you'll have sort of specks and things everywhere. That could get blocked up and uh, cause a few issues there. So what's the toolkit for today? We have an earbud or a little baby ear cleaner, multi-tool, shifter, always use a Leatherman for, or just always have a Leatherman. Baby wipes, some grease, and an old rag, uh, thanks to Uskadel Uskadi for supplying an old sock from many years back. But just an old rag of any type. That's all we'll need for today. This is basic 101, this is not 102. 102 I'll cover at the end. Okay, let's start off. Now, initially we want to inspect the kicker at a closer range than normal, just to see if there's any issues at all with the belt. Now the characteristic of a soon to be broken belt is fraying on the edges. You'll see the material just fray out. They're a, um, I mean, they're a super strong belt, but like any moving part, it will, it will break at a certain point in time. You can see, I'm not quite sure if I can get the camera in there. A little, uh, you'll see fray sections coming out from here, which is a telltale sign that it's got a little life left. Um, this belt looks pretty good. This has probably been replaced three or four thousand Ks ago. So, thumbs up on that one. We'll have a look at Veronica's belt. And you'll see, yeah, what I was talking about before, you'll see that fray through there, that little bit of, um, the little fibres will come out from under here. You'll also get skipping. Now, not from the cassette, but from in here. Again, that's on in today's video. That's all you need to know. So as long as there's nothing fraying out the side, it'll be very obvious. So both of those look okay. If you're taking your bike on and off these trainers quite a lot, this nut may come loose just here, this little hold nut. So watch for that. That's where this comes in handy. So just make sure that's got not a lot of tension on it, but enough that the freewheel still spins and it's not locked up there. 11 speed has a little less clearance, but you can still get a spanner in there. Shift it, sorry. No problems at all. Okay, so they look good to go there. What I'll do on mine, I'll actually take mine off and grease the hub. Let's get that done now. So skewer comes out. Now that can get a little hard through there if you've had a bike on and off there and the threads are getting a little blunt. And that's off and that simply slides out. There are two shims. There's one shim that goes there. There's one shim in the back. Don't use your little poles. I've just lost mine in there. So just watch those. As I said, you need a uh, rag. 
Once your cassette is off, just a simple cleaning of that. There is an inside shim. You take off. If you want to have a quick look inside what's actually there, there's not a lot going on. That's the kicker, that's the, the main bearings in there. And there's the back side of the cassette. Don't lose those little teeth. Poles, I think they're called. Don't lose those. It can be a little tricky to put back on. So I've cleaned that shim. Now these shims need to be, these shims definitely need grease on them. They will face and shorten and that'll cause all number of headaches. So a simple clean. Have the inside there. End of the thread. Okay, of the shim, and now here's where our grease comes in handy. Now, there's no scientific approach to this. It's just make sure it has grease on it. Grease on there, a little bit for around the races. Okay, that'll work its way in. Just clean off the excess. Okay, that shim back on. I'll give that a bit of a clean as well. So that's just a simple, if you run around the same direction, those little things won't actually pop out. So give that a bit of a clean. Okay, that all looks pretty good. Run some grease around those. Okay, you don't have to take the cassette off either, so that's kind of handy for just the basic maintenance day today. Cassette stays on. And back on. Now here's the tricky part. You may have seen other videos of me trying to do this, but those little poles don't stick in too well. So the trick is find something sharp. There we oh, beautiful, I found the key one. So push those in. Free wheel done. And the other shim as well for the outside. Bit of a clean. And the outside nut goes on. If you find this is coming loose all the time, maybe a little bit of Loctite on that. Um, Loctite's not purely evil. Okay, free hub's good. And back with a bit more tension. To lock everything in place. Beautiful. Okay, so free hub serviced. Cassette's pretty clean, so I won't take that off and worry about that today. That's one side done. Let's look at the other side. Herein lies the optical sensor. That's what that um, the little zebra crossing is all about. That top cap comes off pretty quick with those bolts there. One of the old top caps that had just the push out buttons. Those right there, they're your, um, your optical sensors. So just ensuring they're clean of all dust. That's all you need to do for those. So I'm gonna pop mine out, just make sure that's fine. I'm not gonna worry about Veronica's. Hers are still relatively new. Very careful with those. There's all the electronics. And right there are the two little eyes. And while I'm in there as well, just any junk. That's all looking pretty nice actually. This environment's quite clean, so we keep things nice and tidy. Everything else is good. Straight back in. It's always good when it goes straight in. And just because we can, 
put it on this side. Just making sure everything's nice and clean. That's the uh, that's the adapter. If you haven't seen this pulled out before, it gives you a 135 or a 130 spacing. Most roadies. I'll set it to 130, and they're done. There shouldn't be any creaking coming out of here, so we don't really need to oil that. Um, I guess if you are experiencing a lot of creaking, it might be something to look at. But that's still pretty tight. Okay, that's it for this section. I'll go do Veronica's free hub. I won't worry about her sensor clean. That's all looking pretty clean. Just another thing as well, keep things tidy. You'll get a little bit of chain, um, chain grit on these things. I like to keep things nice and looking good. So there we go. Oh, quick story about the yellow stickers as well. These are the Tour de France stickers. And if your OCD is like mine, you've spotted it already. Yeah. One of the stickers didn't actually stick. The first sticker wasn't any wasn't sticky on the upside. So yeah, I might have to get onto Wahoo and get a one single yellow sticker because, because OCD. Oh, and in uh, part two of this, this is the kicker calibration kit. So we'll do an advanced recalibration if your kicker is reading low or high, and it should bring it into line. So this is hen's teeth, very rare to get a hold of. There's a few tricks and tips to make sure your kicker's reading a lot more accurate. Stay tuned for that one. Okay, all done. So free hub serviced, that nut tightened, the belt checked, optical sensor cleaned, and just everything else generally cleaned. So I'll jump on, perform a spin down, and we should be go for a few more thousand Ks. Thanks for watching.